Hey, what's up, chitheads? Welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be a little different. It's not going to be as edited as usual. It's not going to be that usual Dolby Atmos, you know, theater quality video that I put out. This is going to be more informal. This is going to be writing the work on my new E-Ride Pro SS. Now, the goal of this video is to kind of introduce you guys to these, these E-Dirt bikes. This is my first one, and this is going to be more from a perspective of a person who is familiar with E-bikes. I didn't grow up with dirt bikes. I don't have any friends named Riggs or Nuke. I don't drink Monster Energy drinks. You know, I can't do a backflip on a motorcycle. So I feel like this is gonna be more of an introduction to people that are curious to these, but aren't necessarily named Kyle. This is the E-Ride Pro SS. It's a 72 volt electric dirt bike. This is comparable to the Surons, but this one's a little faster. I'm gonna go ahead and steal Mr. Central Driver's entire format and ride to work with me. So guys, come on, let's ride to work with me, huh? Oh yeah, and I hear you barking, big dog. I actually have a full face helmet on order. It's gonna be delivered today. I live on a second story, so I have to drag this thing up and down the stairs. And I always have the battery outside of it. You can charge the battery, you can charge these with the battery inside, but unlike with e-bikes, these are kind of designed to charge with the battery outside of the bike. So you see this big cavern here is for the battery. This is where the massive 72 volt, 40 amp hour battery goes. It's a little bit awkward to put this thing in here because these cables are always kind of in the way. So you want to slide this down, plug in your power cables here, this cable here, and then there's a breaker down in here that you have to switch on. So that the bike is ready to turn on at this point. Close this up, put the key in the ignition here, and then now the bike is on. There is a sensor on the kickstand, so as long as the kickstand's down, the throttle doesn't work. So I'm gonna go ahead and put on my gloves and we're gonna get going. Now there's two ride modes on this. There's economy, eco mode and sport mode. Eco mode is limited to 28 miles an hour, which actually works out kind of perfect for riding around on normal streets because uh, works out to be just about 25 miles an hour. So, and we're off. Now, depending on where you live, the ability to ride these around on the street is gonna vary. Uh, luckily for me, luckily and unluckily for me, I live in a town that has significantly worse problems to worry about than people riding around their dirt bikes. So I feel like as long as I'm not riding like a complete jerk, I don't really have much to worry about here. See, I'm on eco mode, full throttle. I'm maxed out 28 miles an hour here. Now, the first thing I noticed with this bike is this bike has a massive amount of torque. Uh, in sport mode, this bike will do zero to 30 in 2.6 seconds. So this bike is very fast, especially in the mid range of the power. I've gotten to a top speed of 55 miles an hour. It did take me a bit of adjustment to get used to this bike because, uh, you know, I'm so used to pedaling. It feels weird to be throttling around without moving your legs at all. And one of the biggest things is, is when I go up a curb, I'm so used to timing my pedal stroke and then pulling up on the handlebars. It just feels weird to not do that on this bike. So it's like I just feel like I end up hitting the curbs harder than I should because I'm just plowing into them rather than pulling up and going up. right after we get out of the neighborhood here, I kind of go into sport mode. Here we are in sport mode. You can see this thing is very fast. The marketing is a bit different on these dirt bikes than it is on uh, e-bikes. So I couldn't find the specs on the controller itself, but the motor is rated at, I think 5,000 watts nominal and 12,000 watts peak. Yeah, you heard that right, 12,000 watts. That is crazy. So this bike is like way faster than a typical e-bike. That 40 amp hour battery, 72 volt, works out to be about 2,800 watt hours, which is kind of weird to me because that's like double the battery size on a wired bike, but somehow it can put out a peak of 12,000 watts. It doesn't, uh, doesn't seem like it scales up the way it should because a wired bike will put out about 2,400 watts. And this is putting out like five times more than that with about a 
double the size battery. So I don't really know how that works out on the back end. For the record, we're not going directly to work. I, I go to the gym in the morning before I start work. So we're gonna be going to the gym first. And I'm gonna show you how I lock up this thing. It's gonna be quite anxiety inducing considering that this thing costs $48.99. Um, in my opinion, it's well worth it. Because if you guys are aware, I have a Turbo Levo and an entry level Turbo Levo with a 500 watt hour battery and 250 nominal watt mid drive motor starts around the same price. So I don't know how that really makes much sense that you can get a full dirt bike for the same price as an entry level E mountain bike, but uh, somehow, somehow that's the world we live in. So I gotta tell you, I went into this not like Evil Knievel. I went into this bike with a healthy level of fear, you know, respect for it. Because I'm not trying to get injured. My life is going very well right now. I love doing the YouTube thing and a big injury right now is the last thing I want. So I'm trying not to be a total jerk when I ride this and it's a uh, it's tempting guys, I'm gonna tell you that much. So this bike it weighs around 138 pounds. I believe about 40 of those pounds are from the battery alone. I transport this bike up and down the stairs and I always take the battery out. And it's actually easier to ma manage pulling this thing up the stairs than it is my wired bike. And that just comes down to how easy it is to get a grip on the frame and pull it up. And I believe, believe it or not, the footprint of the wired bike is bigger than this dirt bike and no guys don't don't worry I'm not switching to just riding dirt bikes but I think a lot of you guys are probably curious about these two and uh, it's just something I want to add to the channel and I've had so much fun on this guys and let me tell you out of any bike I've ever had this bike gets the most attention hands down I get thumbs ups I get a uh, people stopped and asked me about it. I actually had a guy doing a burnout behind me and then he pulled up next to me and stopped and he's like, hey, that thing's pretty cool. Is it electric? And he started asking me questions about the bike. So people love the bike. And I have to say, I feel like one of the coolest people in the world riding this bike around. I bought this bike at a place called Rev Rides, Vancouver, Washington. I bought this while I was on vacation. And this is actually the second bike I had because the first one, unfortunately, had a strange issue where it wouldn't power on. I thought it was the battery. We did some troubleshooting back and forth with Rev Rides and huge shout out to the guys at Rev Rides, Patrick and Nathan. They helped me walk through it. And then I was talking to E-Ride technical support and we wanted to start up a warranty ticket. And thank God I bought it at a dealer because I was able to just go in there and swap this bike out for another one. And that was a huge weight off my shoulders because while I'm sure it would have gotten taken care of, you don't want to be dealing with various warranty issues and sending things back and forth in the mail. It was so nice to just be able to take the bike back, swap it out, and they even assembled the other bike, this bike for me. So I was able to just take in my other bike, verify this one worked, and then I was on my way. So big shout out to the guys at Rev Rides. And that's a, a disclaimer to you guys. Like, yes, most of the time you buy these things online, but if you do have the opportunity to support a local dealer, I recommend doing that because you get the ability to go in there support and I actually didn't have to pay shipping on this as well. So it was a win-win for me. And again, uh, thanks to the guys at Rev Rides. We're gonna go ahead and hit the detour here. I'm taking the scenic route. Here's, we're gonna go up this curb here. And now we are officially taking the scenic route. You know, I'm not like the uh, Red Bull Rampage type guy. I'm not gonna be taking crazy jumps on this thing or anything. But what I think these bikes are absolutely awesome for is just uh, adventure bikes and going to, going to explore. I think you could probably get 40 miles out of this thing without riding at full throttle the whole time. But I was able to get 20 miles, it was no problem. My typical ride to the gym is 12 miles round trip and I get home around 72% on battery, so. Yeah, you get a decent amount of range out of these for sure.
still getting used to this bike and the different dynamic of riding a dirt bike rather than an e-bike. So I'm not trying to go flying through these fields. Just give you an idea of how much power these things have. Man, it's just crazy. And I really like the way this the throttle is tuned on this bike. It's a nice linear pull. It, it makes it almost feel like a gas engine. Okay, hey guys, just put your burned out car anywhere you want. Right here is fine. This is, unfortunately, it's the reality of the town I live in now. There's actually somebody in my town who started a channel where all he does is fly drones over these empty fields and record all the goings on. And there's a bunch of empty fields in this town and so many of them are pretty much used as uh, places to strip stolen cars. Man, I'm sort of trying to concentrate. I haven't been through this field in a while and it's kind of, the recent rain has changed it quite a bit. So yeah, you know, they dump all this trash. These are homeless encampments here and they strip out a bunch of cars through here. Now we're onto a regular bike trail here. So you know I said, don't worry, big dog, I have a full face helmet on the way. Well, that may be a little side story here is that uh, one time I used to install direct TV for a living and uh, I was in a bad neighborhood over by where I, I was in a bad neighborhood and the homeowner I was working at, he called me, he said, hey, what's up, big dog? And man, that was like the best day of my life. I felt like I officially made it. It was like, man, I got nicknames now. I'm officially invited to the barbecue. So I did that whole job. I was on cloud nine. I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm big dog now. And then right when I was leaving, we signed the paperwork. One of his friends walks up and what does he say? He says, hey, what's up, big dog? Oh, I can't tell you how devastating that was. You know, it's like if everyone's big dog, then no one's big dog. And it made me like uh, question the validity of the whole nickname system. You know, how redundant are these nicknames? Man, this thing just has crazy power on tap. You know, I try not to, uh, unfortunately this town does have issues with sideshows and uh, ride outs. So I'm trying not to uh, ride like one of those people and I don't want to be lumped in with them. So that's my biggest worry with this is that, you know, I just don't want to be lumped in with those, that crowd. And I do generally, you know, especially if I see any people on these trails, I definitely slow down. I'm not flying around with people around. But tell me, uh, I'm going to tell you guys, it is definitely a temptation. I'll tell you that much. Yeah. The uh, acceleration on this thing is exhilarating. It is, it's hard to uh, it's hard to really express that when you're not riding the bike yourself. Man, this thing is super fast. From what I've been told, I've never ridden a Suron, but these are supposed, supposedly much faster than the Surons. These are a, a 72 volt system. The Surons are 60 volt. So this is like buying a modified Suron right off the showroom floor. I'm not a wheelie guy. I might try it at some point, but at this point, I'm definitely uh, not ready to be trying wheelies. But I wanted to come up here because I'm gonna jump off this curb. Oh man, that's like a cushion. You know, the thing is, like I said, the, the marketing on these is different than the radio e-bikes. I couldn't find how much suspension travel this thing has. So I know it's got quite a bit, but yeah, I don't know. It's got a, uh, I'll still look around a little further, but as of now, I don't know how much travel this thing has. Man, this thing goes nice and stable. It's got 19 inch wheels, front and rear. The staggered, so the rear wheel is fatter than the front wheel. See, we're doing all this riding so far. We're at four and a half miles. I'm at 90%. Honestly, for me, at least of right now, I don't really plan on doing any mods to this. I might 
do some aesthetic mods just to make mine stick out a little bit, but man, that reminds me, let me show you just how cool this bike looks. I mean, look at this thing. How cool is that? These things are just so awesome looking. I don't know, man, it's just, uh, we live in such an awesome day and age where you can buy something like this and just ride it around. And it's nice because this thing doesn't make a ton of racket like a traditional dirt bike. So you can like ride this around without terrorizing your neighbors or, man, I don't know. I just really like this bike. It's so fun. So they just give you an idea of what you're going to look like riding an E-Ride Pro SS. Guys, you don't need to check your uh, prescription. This is not John Connor. This is shoot the chit here. This is my third time riding it in now. And, uh, I usually will drive my truck. I had a good streak of riding my e-bike for a while, but I've, uh, with the bad weather, I kind of stopped that. And now I'm just trying to get back in the routine. So now I'm doing it with this bike, which is nice because my truck gets about 14 miles a gallon on the uh, city road. So I'm going to save myself some gas money and have fun in a way. Easily cruised at 40 miles an hour. This has regenerative braking here. There's two settings on the left. I honestly couldn't tell you the difference between the two. I'm guessing one's more aggressive. But uh, yeah, I just typically leave it in one. So when you let off the throttle on this bike, it definitely wants to slow down. It doesn't want to cruise very well. This bike is so fast. And for this form factor, I feel a 60 mile an hour top speed is plenty fast. I don't, I don't need to go 70 or 80 on a bike this size. So one thing I do notice, this bike is a little on the noisy side. And it's a, this has a belt drive and then that converts into a chain drive. So the chain on this bike does make some noise. You can probably hear it in the video. It's like this nice whining noise. And every once in a while you hear some chain slap. So I guess the Talaria Stings are significantly quieter because they have gear drives, but I, I, I don't really care. It's kind of nice to hear this thing working. Now, let me go back over here to the trails. Man, this bike is just like a childhood fantasy, guys. I can't tell you how cool it is. You know, but in a way, it is sad because, uh, you know, I'm 44 now. I just got this bike. I've been riding around the old neighborhood and, uh, None of my friends live, most of my friends have moved away. So it's like, it reminds me of the good old days when all, you know, when you used to ride your bike around and you'd stop at your friend's houses. But now I kind of just ride this thing around with nowhere to go. So it's a bit bittersweet, at least in my situation. But I, you know, I guess if you have friends, you could uh, go ride by their houses. It doesn't apply to me. So I'm gonna try and demonstrate to you guys how much power this bike has by going up a hill I've used in uh, e-bike videos. So here it is, guys. We're gonna be climbing up that hill right there. I'm gonna start out in eco mode. I'll do it from a dead stop. This is pretty steep. I don't know the grade because I'm not a nerd. But uh, yeah, let's see. we're gonna go eco mode right now. Look at that. No problem. Let's switch over to sport mode. Yeah. We're accelerating up this super steep hill. Now, I can climb this on the e-bikes, but it's a struggle. I just wanted to demonstrate to you guys, like this thing is crazy powerful. So this bike has a horn, which is nice. And it has this turbo button here. If when I, what they told me at the shop was that you put it in turbo mode, it's a limited time feature. I think it works for like 15 seconds or so, which will give you additional top end speed. I've only tried turbo once, and I honestly couldn't tell you any difference at all. This bike has had a few revisions. This is the 2.0 version. I guess one of the revisions didn't even have the turbo mode. So this has a turbo mode and I really have felt no, uh, haven't really felt much desire to use it. This bike is plenty fast enough in sport where I don't really, it doesn't, uh, I don't find myself wanting more power. You can hear the regen going on. I can't imagine these things regen much of your battery. That's why I don't necessarily think 
adding regen feature to e-bikes is going to be super useful. It's more, it's good for marketing, I guess, but I mean, what are you going to do? Add one or two percent to your range? I guess that's nice, but I just don't see it really honestly being that useful. Let's, let's see how this does over these speed bumps here. <laughs> Yeah, it just eats these things right up. When I was riding my e-bike to the gym, I would get out front and start locking it up. And I think people looked at me like, man, what is this guy riding a bike to the gym? He's kind of a loser. But you know what, guys, you pull up on your electric dirt bike, they think you're a bad, bad man. Let me show you how I locked this up. Quite the process. And I honestly kind of feel like Pee Wee Herman from Pee Wee's Playhouse, or Pee Wee's Big Adventure. So luckily for me, Yeah, it's an electric dirt bike. Oh, it is? Yeah. See? So I told you, everyone wants to talk about this bike. So first step, I removed the battery here. Luckily for me, the bike rack here is a perfect fit. So I move the battery and I bring the battery in with me. I turn the breaker off, disconnect it. This is a little uh, lesson in social anxiety too, because I'm out in front of my gym talking to myself. Pull this battery out. And this works out perfect for the hip lock D1000. If you guys know anything about this lock, this is a beefy lock, it's $300, and it takes like 10 minutes and multiple grinder wheels to cut, cut through. So I feel somewhat safe with this thing locked up with the hip lock D1000, and that's just one of my locks. This is kind of a learning experience. It took me a little bit. I put the lock here through the frame and run this cable to the front wheel. Yes, you could steal this bike, but uh, it's gonna be, I'm gonna make it uh, difficult for you. This puts the key mechanism inside the frame of the bike. So you're not gonna be able to mess around with the key on this because this is gonna be underneath the closed lid as well. So there you go. Step one is complete. I run this old kryptonite Glock through the rear wheel. I usually do this on the other side, guys, but I uh, just wanted to demonstrate here. There we go. So I feel like we're locked up pretty good here. Rear wheel, frame, front wheel, and then this locks as well, and I bring the battery inside. All right, now we're ready to rock and roll. So you're at 89% battery, not bad. See ya. All right, guys, don't forget, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you tomorrow. Well, you guys don't say your YouTube outro is in real life. Running a bit tight on time, so I'm gonna take a more direct route to work. We are gonna take a little bit of a detour. And it just soaks up these bumps. The suspension is actually more firm than I was expecting, but there's more travel to it. It's firm, but you know, at the speed you hit things on a dirt bike compared to a regular bike, the suspension softens up the harder you hit things. So I expected it to be really soft, but it's actually not as soft as you'd think. We got a lot of rain recently, so these trails are nice and green. But the vast majority of the year, these are all like uh, really brown through here. I haven't gone on this section in quite a while. It's pretty bumpy. Okay, we're gonna do some hill climbing here. This is really steep. Dude, it's just absolutely no problem. That's crazy. Even on my Turbo Levo, I have to drop down all the way to the lowest gear and pump up the assist to get up that hill. And this cruised up to it like nothing. Is this what your guys' commute to work looks like? It can if you get an E-Ride Pro SS or an e-bike for that matter. And guys, keep in mind, these opinions are 100% unbiased. I don't have affiliate links for this bike. This is just my own thoughts. This, this bike is just straight up awesome. You do have to go into it, guys, with a healthy amount of respect. You can get injured very seriously on these things. So, and... We're going to be going down a really steep hill, guys, and I haven't done much hill 
on this thing, so I'm going to be doing it really carefully here. And, uh, if you guys are familiar with this area, you know this is a very steep hill. Man, these brakes are something else. And keep in mind, the brakes on this bike are reversed, so front brake is on the right, rear brake is on the left. But guys, yeah, like I said, there's no affiliates for this bike. I bought this bike 100% out of my own money. I bought it with just one month of my YouTube revenue, which I'll show you here. So here's a fellow bike rider. Let's see if I get a courtesy wave. Oh, I got the, I got the finger, I got the finger wave. There they are. I get a wider range of reactions on this. And as long as I'm not going too fast, I feel most people are friendly, but I think other people look at me kind of like, what are you doing? You're a jerk. So, you know, you take the good with the bad and it's all part of the unrestricted lifestyle, guys. So get used to it. Honestly, guys, I think E-Ride could have done a better job at naming their, I don't really like the way E-Ride, doesn't really ride off the, doesn't really roll off the tongue. Woo, big ruts, big ruts. All right, let's drop it in. It's all about finding that uh, nice speed where the suspension kind of just floats over everything. You go too slow, all the bumps are really rough, and you go too fast, you'll go flying over things. So, guys, I'm not evil can evil. Ooh, there we go. That was fun. What do you think? All in the commute to work, guys. How your, how's your commute going? You in stop and go traffic? Well, I guess you shouldn't be watching this if you're in stop and go traffic. So we're at 79% battery. 4.1 miles since the seven earlier, we're at about, I don't know how to do math, was that 11 miles total? Not bad, 20% battery for 11 miles. Granted, these things never wear down in a linear fashion. I was riding down this street yesterday and a guy rode by and he just slowed down and he just kept giving me the thumbs up. I'm telling you guys, it's like a childhood dream. Always wanted a dirt bike. It's just never too late. And speed up. gets moving I don't buy a bunch of expensive things whether you know you may think that for my channel or not I can kind of justify this one because of the channel but that you know after tax this is about 5300 bucks that made me physically sick to my stomach but I have to say all that's gone now it's uh, I feel completely fine about it now it's like a maybe the best decision I've ever made of my life This is, this bike is just so cool, man. Oh, we're here just in time. Well, guys, we made it to work. I forgot to tell you, I work from home. Uh, I'm a YouTuber, guys. What if I told you my work was actually riding this bike to the gym in the morning? You know, you can't ask for a better job, guys. And I have to say, Without being too corny, I absolutely love making these YouTube videos. And now that companies are sending me products to review, I have these moments where I'll be riding around, like I was riding around that Porto Max scooter from Hobsco, and I was just riding it around at night one night, and I was like, this is so cool. I get to just ride and test these things that I, I love already and make videos about it. So it's like, man, I am living the dream and I don't want you guys to know that I 100% appreciate that and I don't take it for granted. Whether you guys see it or not, making these videos is an absolute ton of work behind the scenes. And I want to let you guys know I appreciate it and I love seeing your comments and I love being a YouTuber. I refuse to call myself an influencer. But anyways, guys, that was the initial, my ride to work on the E-Ride Pro SS. I love this bike and uh, I will be riding the crap out of it. As of now, I got 91 miles on it. I've only been riding this thing for about one week now. So yeah, thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I will catch you in the next one. Peace. Why do they do that?